Santa Cruz Communications has become one of the most well-established Hispanic public relations agency in the country. This is not as easy as it sounds. In this public relations line of business, you really have to fight against a fierce and never-ending competition for the most valuable clients. I had networked a lot, so I had a lot of great connections. So that when I made the leap, I already knew that it wasn't going to be, you know, this, this huge stretch before I got some accounts. And I actually, within two weeks, I started with three accounts. Um, but it was scary. I mean, it's scary. It's like you're taking a leap into a pool and you don't know if the pool has water in it. This is Claudia Santa Cruz, the founder of Santa Cruz Communications. She is the consummate professional and someone that knows a lot, not only about her business, but also about life and how to overcome all sorts of difficulties to advance and become a successful entrepreneur. Let's talk to Claudia and find out cómo lo hizo. Success. Success. Habitos. Habits. ¿Cómo lo hizo? How do they make it? Descubra las costumbres y secretos de los triunfadores. Discover the habits and the secrets of those who have succeeded. So, Claudia, tell me, you were always an entrepreneur? Actually, no. Um, I was in the corporate world for about 10 years before I decided to launch my own business. Is that right? 10 years doing what? Doing public relations, which is pretty much what I do now. Oh, so you, you were doing public relations and then you branched out and you opened your own practice, let's say, or business. Yes. How come? It was one of those challenges that I felt was on my bucket list. I wanted to see if I could ever make it on my own. And I was blessed that I started my career and worked in very great companies. So I, you know, I learned a lot. I networked a lot. And then there, I hit a point where it was just kind of one of those ideal situations where it's like, you know what, it's either now or never. And I decided I'm going to jump. Okay. So I have to ask you, what about fear? Were you afraid? Because you were used to the bi-weekly check and the <laughs> benefits and all that. Of course. I was definitely afraid. But I think that in my case, what really helped is that I knew that I had 10 years of experience behind me. I had networked a lot, so I had a lot of great connections. So that when I made the leap, I already knew that it wasn't going to be, you know, this, this huge stretch before I got some accounts. And I actually, within two weeks, I started with three accounts. Um, but it was scary. I mean, it's scary. It's like you're taking a leap into a pool and you don't know if the pool has water or not. Right. But you do it because if you don't, then you're going to ask yourself, what if? And I did not want to ask myself, what if? So that's how long ago? We just celebrated our 18th anniversary. 18th. So that's, you know, some time ago. But walk me through the process because there are many people that are working from nine to five. And uh, there are many people that are considering to leave the nine to five. But, you know, we have to alert them that if you're going to be by yourself, you are going to change the nine to five from five in the morning to nine in the evening. So it's going to be double hours, double stress and all that stuff. Do you think that at the beginning was that kind of uh, situation that you went through? The stress, the fear, the no, you know, not to know what's going to happen and all that stuff. Yes, and not so much the fear, because what ends up happening, what you have to realize is before you make that leap, you are going to work a lot. But it's a sacrifice. You have to look at the long-term goal. Short-term, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. I'm not going to paint it in any pretty color. It's going to be hard. However, if you stay with it, if you continue, if you, you know, just basically show up day after day after day and put in the hours, it will have its rewards. So you are better off today in terms of controlling your life, being an independent and self-employed entrepreneur, or when you were an employee and you were getting your check, your benefits and all that? Much better today. Um, I think not only as an entrepreneur, as a businesswoman, but as a, as a woman uh, who is a mother and a wife, the ability to have that flexibility 
by having my own business so that I can have a more balanced life and be able to not only on the one hand run my business, but also to be able to be there and be present for my kid. That's important. And that I don't think I would have been able to achieve in the corporate world. That's amazing. Now, let's say that in the corporate world, in your job, you were making just a number to work it out. You were making $100,000. Just let's say that. How long did it take you to match that income in your business? I would say, well, in, in my case, like I said, because within two weeks, I had three accounts and they were three, thank goodness, very decent accounts. Within three weeks, I already was, was achieving that. That's amazing. Sometimes it takes a, you know, two or three years to, to get to that degree of uh, independence. And... I think what helped me out is the reputation. I'm a true believer that you have to guard your reputation with everything. And your reputation will carry you a long way. I see. People know that you do a good job, that you produce results, that you deliver, then they will take a risk on you. Do you have a mentor? I don't have like a mentor right now. I My first and I, I think main mentor in my life was my father. My father was a petroleum engineer. He was a drilling director for Phillips, which is now known as ConocoPhillips. And he, I learned from him to the hard work, to have ethics, um, the way that he treated people, his, the way that he was um, respected. So I learned from him a lot on how I wanted to be in my career. I see. Now, when you were making the decision to jump uh, to independence, uh, did you talk to your husband? Were you married at the time? And was he supportive? I was married at the time and he was scared <laughs> because, you know, my salary at that time was more than his. So he was concerned, but but he, I finally convinced him, let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. I finally convinced him that it was worth a shot that, you know, at the end of the day, if it didn't work out, nothing is permanent. You know, if it doesn't work out, I can always look for another job that, you know, that's always out there. But if it does work out, if, you know, in that opportunity it does, then you are some, so, I mean, such a better place. That's a very smart from you, considering the other option that you can always go back. Yeah. You know, to ask for a job and then, you know, you try, but you had, you had the best chance. Yes, exactly. That, that's very important. Now, uh, what's the most important experience in your field? Because you, we're talking about public relations here. Correct. Let's jump into that. So what we... As far as what we do or as far as an experience that we've had? In terms of how is that field? So basically what we do is we promote a company's products, services, or individuals that want to reach the Hispanic market. Specifically, you found that niche of, you know, focusing on the Hispanic market uh, nationwide. And so we do it in different ways, utilizing various um, strategies. Uh, one of the main strategies is via media relations. Basically, we coordinate press junkets. We have press conferences. We coordinate interviews. We pitch stories to the press and get the word out there. But obviously, among that is, is a whole plan in place because you want to be able to make sure that first you have your key messages developed, that you know exactly what audience you want to reach and how you're going to reach them. And so it's tied to the overall business objective of each company. So it's tough. It is. Very difficult. You know what? It's challenging in the sense that if you make a mistake that goes out in the press, it's going to come out all over the place. And if there's a, you know, if something comes out that's negative, you have to work on managing that so that the right. damage to the to the company's image is not as harsh. So there's definitely, you know, in fact, it's kind of interesting because on in regards to the different careers, Public relations is always one of the top five most stressful in all the studies that come out, really? which is interesting because we're Why? right up there Why with like that? the airport, you know, tower operators, because I think that we deal with a lot of different personalities, a lot of crisis, a lot of issues, a lot of potential nightmares. And in this day and age in particular, when something can just explode on social media, we're the ones that have to make sure that we keep it together and that we turn it around so that we can salvage the reputation of that company or that personality. So before you were working and social media wasn't in there. That's how, correct. Yeah. How do you adapt to, to the new reality? You know what? That's that's a key. 
as far as being an entrepreneur, that's the key to any business. You have to be adaptable and you have to adapt to anything that's that's coming up, to all the innovation and be on the edge. I'm not saying just adapt, but be like on the edge, you know, in order to keep ahead and to stay ahead of the game and be competitive, you have to do that. So for us, it wasn't so much as, you know, should we do it? How do we do it? It was like, okay, we're going to need to do it. So let's do it. And how do we do do it better and make sure that we achieve the results. Did you foresee the, the importance of social media or you, you just got by surprise? Oh, my God, we have to, to catch up and do something here. I think it's, you know what, it's always a progress, a process. Um, just like, I mean, before, you know, we used to send press releases via fax, <laughs> right? you know, and now everything is through email. And so, so I think that as technology just evolves, you kind of evolve with it. So you are the CEO of your company, correct? That's correct? So do you put a lot of hours in, in the actual work or you go there and you have like a habit, like I get there first two hours, I just put my head into this and that. Walk me through your organization in terms of your own performance, mm -hmm. the day-to-day. -day. On a day-to-day, -day, I, I always have a list of all the things that I need to accomplish on each day. And that list includes partly certain work that I want to do myself because even though I now oversee the company, I'm still a PR person at heart and I love to do what I do. So I don't want to lose that by focusing on the business aspect of it and the administration of it. So I still do some of it because I enjoy it. But on the other hand, I do oversee a staff. And so I need to make sure that they are accomplishing what they're supposed to accomplish and that we are, you know, meeting all the deadlines of clients and achieving all the results. So some entrepreneurs say, I don't uh, respond to emails until three o'clock every day, because if I get into the email universe, you know, my day went to, you know, to, to the trash. So I waste my day. Do you do something like that or, or you don't care? I mean, you take it as it comes. You know, uh, I take it in chunks uh, because at the end of the day, I'm in communications. So, We work a lot via email, via phone, via text, via WhatsApp. <laughs> I mean, in every single way. But but if I have to sit down and develop a plan, a communications plan, I need to be able to focus. So I try to disconnect during a time like that when I have to develop a campaign. But for the most part, uh, I'm quite accessible and I'm always looking at emails because I need to. I need yeah. to see, you know, who's contacting us, what what's taking place because all the All our clients are moving forward and, you know, it doesn't stop. Your story sounds like a very happy story. Everything went well since day one, basically, or week two. Did you ever make a, a mistake that was actually bad and you regret it and uh, you have to face it and solve it? Do you remember one particular mistake that you made? I think it's not so much big mistakes as that is as some small ones that I think we have all made. Like, for example, when you send that on email and you copy a person that you're not supposed to copy. <laughs> It's a nightmare. <laughs> But yes, exactly. And then you're like, oh my gosh, how do I take that back? You can't. <laughs> so I think that adapting to new technology right. is definitely a, was definitely a challenge at the beginning. Um, once you, you know, actually right now, I haven't worked on Google documents, so I'm learning to do that because that's the thing right now. It's, it's It actually makes it, you know, more efficient right. to be able to share a document, et cetera. And, you know, it's just learning to utilize. So I think it's not so much making mistakes as it is to dealing with certain challenges and being able to, you know, work through those challenges and get through them. So what do you recommend for someone that wants to jump into your industry in terms of launching their own PR business? I think that the first thing that I recommend is, you know, hopefully they have a background and a reputation behind them. Because if you just graduated from college and you want to launch a PR agency, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because you don't know anyone. You don't, you haven't even ex had the experience to run it, to how, you know, how to develop a budget. How do you work on it? How do you, and to kind of get all those, get all that experience in place so that when you do it on your own, you're not learning as you go along. Because you're on, when you're on your own, you're on your own. I mean, granted, there's, you know, I have tried to surround myself with a lot of people that I can bounce ideas off, that are, you know, great team members. But, but at the end of the day, you're the boss. So, you know, rather than learn it out there by yourself, you know, try to get some experience 
on a regular job before you do that launch. So the 